What up, everybody? This is Stuart Knight, author of the books Marginalizing White Supremacy, Poetic Visions, A Steep Mister for a Sister, and, of course, A Spirit the World Has Forgotten, available at Amazon.com, Lulu.com, Barnes & Noble, and iBooks also. And today I'm going to try to express a tad bit of life game. You see, going around on the net these days, there's this uh, confrontation between two uh, old friends, I should say. Or maybe I could say it like that. Two old friends behind uh, one of them actually going up behind uh, the other male friend and uh, having sex with uh, a girl that the previous friend used to mess with. And in, to, in today's terms and in old school terms and in a term that's been long around for centuries, it's called dirty macking. Now, on this podcast, you know, these two cats got into a pretty heated argument about argument about whether or not one of the cats, you know, uh, 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 slept with this uh, this dude's girl, not as not his girl at that time, but a girl he had messed with from the past. And uh, this is a, a, a notion that has been going around in, you know, the black community and amongst black men for a long time is that if, you know, if a man, if your homeboy or one of your friends messes with the girl, you as his friend should never, ever sleep with her. You know, if the occasion arises where you might have the chance to get them boots, you know, uh, you, uh, you shouldn't touch it. Because your homie used to either has either slept with her or she has been his uh, girlfriend. Now, uh, that is true to a degree. I mean, there's a lot of men today in the cemeteries and in the penitentiaries behind a false ideal of thinking that they uh, they own the kitty. If they have uh, sex with the woman, you know, a lot of men feel that, you know, if they go through all the effort it takes to get this woman to somewhat submit to a uh, sexual acts that he is, in fact, like conquered her and it makes him like more of a man. And he has to claim and stake his territory. That is his territory because he went through all this effort, uh, whether he spit game or spent money or whatever have you to get that, you know, that kitty. You know, so the notion is put down that none of your friends, you know, none of your male friends should ever try to get with this woman and, or ha try to have sex with this woman. Or if she offered it to you, you no, know, you turn it down because, you know, your homeboy used to mess with her. And like I said just a second ago, a lot of men need to realize you do not own that kitty, no matter how much. Not unless you've grown old with the woman. And you got to the point to where you can't even you, you, sex is like a, a past tense memory. Only then do you own that coochie. Other than that, nah, you never do. She she can give that. She 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 can and she gonna give it to whoever she wants. Now, I can understand, you know, that it shows a lack of character upon an individual who uh, goes behind you and down talks you. To try to get, you know, uh, to get uh, uh, to, uh, to, to get comfortable with that other female. It's not the right word, but that's the word I'm going to use. You know, if he goes behind your back and uh, tells all your, you know, tell you all your business to the girl and who you did this with that and that with this and talk bad on your name, you know, to try to swoon this girl to get with him. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff, man, you don't do. You just don't do. But if, you know, um, you had a girl and, you know, you, you, you know, talked her out of the, you know, the draws or whatever have you and y'all did y'all thing and that was all it was and a jump off. I mean, what does it matter if your homeboy hit? Long as he ain't down talking you or sneaking behind your back, that, you know, go ahead. I mean, that's, you know, women have been up to that kind of thing for thousands of years, you know, and for thousands of years, you know, uh, in some instances when the man had this notion like he owned it. It caused some drama, you know, it, it really does. It, it caused some drama between men. You know, Socrates in one of his treatises, you know, says something to the effect that, you know, uh, 
you uh, you're not really much of a friend till you share a woman with your homeboy. <laughs> you know that that was you know thousands of years ago, and, uh, and to let you know that you know the game been around a long time. That sometimes women are getting the middle of two friends to cause maybe potentially those friendships to break up or to cause some drama. You know, so the best thing for a man, the best perspective that a man should have is that he don't own it. Now, you should never, you know, go up and, you know, try to swoon your homeboy girl. And you should be a man enough to turn that down. You see, because a lot of, a lot, and sadly, amongst many black men, you know, they feel as if, you know, their manhood is established or their manhood is verified by how much, you know, sex they can have with various different women. And that is a, off, that is a carryover trait from uh, shadow slavery. Uh, during during the times we were, when we were slave bred, and sadly, you know, to this day, a lot of black men still hold on to that notion that they're not really a man unless they'd embedded a woman or several women. You know, that's something that you know we got to get rid of. So, you know, and sometimes, you know, and here here's the aspect of life where it uh, comes in at is that sometimes a person is put with you by the spirits. This is a spiritual thing I'm about to say now. Sometime a person is put with you that is not really supposed to be there for you, but is there to prepare you for, an, uh, for something that you might have to either go through as a person or for somebody else to actually benefit from that other person, who that person is. In essence, that person is not really there for you to keep, but might be there to teach you a valuable lesson. And this is why this is how it happens in a lot of instances. You know, you know, a man gets with a girl. They don't work out. You know, his you know, the girl, you know, secretly uh, might not even be about, you know, no drama. Or nothing. Once she met the homeboy, you know, uh, they kind of kicked it off. They clicked. They vibed. And once. You know, things separated, you know, between you and her, you know, they had a chance meeting, kicked it off and boom, you know, they start having a relationship. Well, you know, the man who was with the girl at first, he definitely going to feel some type of way, you know, and uh, and if the guy who got with that girl in the end, you know, uh, doesn't come directly to you, then that shows comes comes directly to you and, and it tells you about the situation that might be ha happening. That shows a whole lot of lack of character on that man. You know, see, that's one fault a lot of men think or have is that like if you, you know, if you're in a relationship with a woman and, you know, she creeps out, she do some foul ass stuff and creeps out and have, you know, sex with another man. That other man uh, in some fashion believes that he he is in a sense took your manhood when well, he ain't done nothing. But, you know, got seconds from a scandalous ass woman. So the man, you know, who's in that instance, you know, who let the female go and his homeboy picked her up, he can think the same thing. You know, hey, <laughs> catch, you still got seconds, you know, as long as she took a bath, you know, and hopefully took three or four of, you know, <laughs> you know, she might be a little bit fresh for you, but you still get seconds. So, you know, that's the mindset you got to have instead of, you know, getting very emotional about it and saying, you know, oh, you ain't nothing. This, this. Hey, man, you know, that's you know, maybe she belong better with you. Maybe I was just here, for instance, you know, to uh, maybe I was just here to maybe bring her close to you or to learn my lesson as to uh, can I control my emotions or can I control or, or, or do I can I, you know, uh, inhibit the feeling of uh, uh, me having either owned that woman of possession, you know, or possessing something that you ain't had, you know, saying that that's mine when in fact, you know, it really isn't, you know, uh. So, um, you know, we have to we as men really got to take, you know, a different mindset when it comes to women. You know, women are going to do what they're going to do. But the one thing that uh, we can control is our reactions to those various situations that women might put us in. You know, never uh, uh, n never put no, never allow yourself due to your, you know, your, your inability to control your lust or your hedonistic attitude. Never allow a woman to put you in a situation where you might lose your composure as a man or, or even as an individual period. And uh, in, in a hasty reaction, you know, in a, in a hasty emotional reaction, do something that you're going to regret the rest of your life. 
You know, I, I had an instance once. I've had two instances, you know, with uh, former friends of mine concerning a situation that was kind of like around dirty macking. And, uh, and, you know, for clarity, you know, and, and exposure, you know, and not, my desire to never be a hypocrite. <laughs> I'm going to speak on it a little bit. You know, way back in the day when I was a young man, there was a uh, time when me and two of my friends, we were sitting down in the basement and uh, of his house. And uh, uh, one of my friends who wasn't there, former friends, who wasn't there, it was his girl, two of her friends, and it was two of my homeboys. We was all, you know, sitting around getting high, you know, uh, listening to music. And um, I caught, you know, I, I caught this feeling, you know, like somebody, what the hell, I'm feeling like somebody looking at me or something. So, you know, I kind of look around the room and then I caught the eyes of my, you know, my former homeboy's girl. And I was like, I don't know, I look around like, oh, she ain't looking at me like this. What the hell is going on? I look back at her and she motioned me over. You know, I began to explain to her, I said, hey, look, you know, you're my homeboy girl, you know. I mean, he's built, you know, good looking, good looking man. I'm fat, ugly. I'm, what the hell you want with me? So the girl said to me, fuck him and shit. Something about you. And I was like, uh, and mind you, she was right. There was something about me. I would never say a word to this girl but simply because I just thought she was just sexy as hell. And I knew good and goddamn well if I opened my mouth, a bone was going to fly out that motherfucker. So I was like, nah, that'd be faulty. That's my homeboy girl. Like, nah, I couldn't resist. I'd have to holler at her. So I never said nothing to this girl. And in that moment after she said that, I looked at her and I was like, ah, yeah, you know, right. You're trying to start some drama. Hell no, I ain't about all that. That's my, you my homeboy girl. So just leave it at that. And she, you know, like she got a little bit mad. Mind you, the next day, my homeboy knock on my door, click, 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 you know. Oh, but what's happening, dog? You know, what's up? Hey, man, why every time, why every time you see my girl, you trying to holler at her? I was like, oh, God, no, this bitch didn't do this. <laughs> I said right there and said it like that. And I said to my homie, I said, man, my former homie, I said, man, I ain't trying to holler at your woman. Oh, y'all, man, you know, she told me, you know, this, blah, blah, this, and blah, blah, that. I said, man. I ain't trying to holler at you, woman. Oh, man, you lying, man. Why don't you just tell the truth, man? Why don't you just tell the truth, man? I know you want her. I know you want her. And I'm standing there looking at this dude like, you know, not once did he think to ask me, well, why would she say something like that? No, he going on because, you know, he popping his collar. I'm the shit. I know she fine. You know, you want her and all this shit. And I'm like, I ain't trying to holler at you, woman. And once the man called me a liar, man, I I, I, I I was at that boiling point, you know. And I just kind of looked at him and I said, man, I had to make a decision. I said, okay, I'm going to hit this motherfucker in his mouth for calling me a liar. Or I'm just going to say, yeah, I'll holler at it just to get this shit over with. So I took the ladder. I said, oh, yeah, okay, oh, man, you know, what the fuck ever, man. I, I'll holler at her. So what? You know, big deal, blah, you know. Just obviously I was lying. And he, oh, yeah, I knew you was, man. I mean, just don't do that no more. And I'm like, this fuck-ass nigga, you know. God damn. And that's one thing about it, man. Sometimes when a dude is wrapped up into a girl, you just can't tell him. You can't tell him that, you know. I mean, she'd be on some foul stuff, man, you know. Otherwise, it's going to end up in the falling out between you and your friend. Well, at that moment, you know, later on, some other things happened, which, you know, led centered behind a woman, which led to me falling out with this friend and uh, another friend, too, at the same time. I'll, I'll tell that story a little bit here in just a second. But um, the one thing about it is that in that moment, you know, I thought about it years later on, you know, when something else happened. And I said, God damn it, I should have went ahead. <laughs> but I'm glad I didn't, you know. You still got to maintain your character as a man and definitely not let a woman's sex appeal or even your desire to want that sex from her make you do something that's going to be faulty to people that you consider to be your friend. Now, in another instance, there's another case was uh, another friend, a former friend. Uh, he was messing with this tall, good looking white girl, you know, 
And when we all met, you know, he was like, you know, he just like gorilla Mac in the chick, you know, like, ah, you know, you mine. Uh, he had possession real bad, you know, and I, and the chick was obviously checking me out. And I'm like, oh, it's, 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 you know, it's a white girl, you know, and I'm just coming into my conscience, you know, then. So, I, you know, I still would mess with a white woman, but, you know, it, you know, so. He was gorilla macking this chick, you know, and she was just giving me signals like a mug. But I was like, eh, you know, you know, they, he all on it like that. Let her have it. Well, something happened, you know, a few weeks later on with my homeboy. He went to jail and uh, I come home from work one day and this girl was sitting on my steps. And I was like, oh, for real? You choosing up like that? So, you know, took the girl around, took a someplace, you know, boom, we did our motherfucking thing. You know, later on that night, my homeboy called and I automatically first thing out of my mouth, you know, he called me from jail. And the first thing that came out of my mouth was I told him about what happened between me and this chick. And he was like, you know, oh, uh, you know, you know, whatever, you know, you know, it's all right. You know, it's cool. Whatever happened. Just kind of let him know. Hey, man, you know, it is what it is. She offered it. and You know, boom, 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 boom. Well, was I wrong in that sense? Yeah. But no, because the girl was giving them signals, you know, and it is what it is. Like I said, I believe in the philosophy. You don't own it. You know, I ain't going to try to holler at your girl. But if she choosing up like that and if I would, you know, yeah, I would. And plus that wasn't his girlfriend. So that was one of the key notions, you know, she wasn't his girlfriend. So as to why I did do that. But. You know, that that former friend held that held on to that, you know, about me for years, thinking that I always tried to talk to women he was dealing with and never, never was that the damn case. So much so, in fact, that, you know, he, uh, you know, uh, caused a few women, talk, spoke bad on me, dirty Mac, spoke not even trying to get with the women, he dirty Mac on me, too, but spoke ill of me. To these women so as to hinder my game if I was really going to try to get with these chicks and uh, it came to head you know with one who uh, really wasn't about her you know it wasn't about what she said because she didn't say anything but it was about some of the things she did that let me know that you know a perception about me a false a false perception about who I was as a person and my character was given to her by these two individuals and uh made her not want to pursue any interest in me. And uh, I could have really liked that girl, but so as it is, you know, sometimes as I believe things happen in life, whereas a person is not there for you to keep just to teach you a lesson or to teach them a lesson. And uh, that individual female, she went on to get with somebody and they've been together a long time. And I actually liked the dude too. So it was kind of ironic, but, it was a cool thing, man. It's good to see. Wasn't meant for me. It was meant for that cat. And they good and happy. That's all good. So keep this in mind, fellas. You don't own her kitty. Ever. Ever. And if you a friend and your homeboy got a girl that you're attracted to, quell your desires to badmouth your homeboy because you want to get with that female you don't do that keep some character as a man and if things happen and you do end up getting with this chick immediately talk it over with your homeboy to see how he feels and if that instance ever comes to you and you the homeboy who had a chick you know you know say it as a man hey man i didn't own it you know i, I did my thing with it you know and hopefully you have fun too because jack Maybe I taught her a few things you can benefit from. <laughs> Take that perspective. And if you ever, as a man, mess with another man's woman, don't ever do it, though. Never do it. Because, you know, even if you don't know the guy, that ain't cool. Don't let women get you in that kind of trap. But if you ever do it, ever do it, and you're confronted with her original man, be man enough to stand up to it and say, yeah, I did and accept the consequences. Not that there should be any, because men got to take that attitude across the board. You don't own it. You never will own it. You don't. 
And she sits there and tell you, look back at you while you're hitting it. Oh, it's yours. Tell her, hell no, you're lying. Tell her straight up, you're lying. This ain't mine. I'm just renting it for the moment. And I'm going to definitely tear up this property. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, keep your character. And you don't own it. You never own the kitty. It'll solve a lot of problems that's going on amongst black men in this society. For real. Once again, this is Stuart Knight, author of the books Marginalizing White Supremacy, Poetic Visions, A Steep Mister for a Sister, and A Spirit the World Has Forgotten, available at Amazon.com, Lulu.com, Barnes & Nobles, and iBooks. Peace.